Hello, everyone. I'm Rusty Dunn from Caterpillar's Enterprise Communications team. Virtually alongside my good friend and colleague, corporate archivist, Lee Fosberg. Lee, how are you doing? Hi, Rusty. I, I'm doing well. I know we've talked about doing these history vignettes in the past and taking them on the road. I just never thought the first one would be from my house. No one could have ever predicted um, the circumstances that we and everyone else find ourselves in. So, yes, a pandemic can keep us physically apart, but can never keep us from having a great conversation about Caterpillar history. So thanks for being here. We always love to dig into the archives, tell those stories about Caterpillar history, and sometimes in the context of what's happening in modern day. And it's appropriate that this is Caterpillar's 95th anniversary or 95th birthday, however you um, prefer to refer to it. Um, but the story today takes us a little beyond those 95 years and really with the founders of our company. Um, in the context of today, with the pandemic, I've heard it compared to sort of fighting a war. And actually, Caterpillar and our founders have a little experience with that. Uh, we are an essential business today, um, which means essentially a number of governments have deemed our products and services as necessary and indispensable. And again, we've been here before, starting uh, not just with World War I, but before that. So talk about that a bit. A mm -hmm. little bit. Right. This wasn't our first rodeo. And really, you have two companies here that form Caterpillar. The Holt Manufacturing Company, who is the inventor of the famous Caterpillar tractor, how we got our name. But the other one, the CL Best Tractor Company. And when World War I occurred, Caterpillar or Holt, who was supplying those tractors, were supplying them to not only the U.S., but the Allies. So these machines were going across the globe. And you got to remember, this is the time period where kind of machines were replacing horses. And that's what was happening with this tractor. And they were used primarily to pull heavy pieces of equipment. Um, they would pull them back and forth to the battlefield, but they also pulled supplies and they pulled troops. What year then did we start shipping out our tractors and where did they come from? Sure. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting is before the U.S. got into the war, they were actually supplying to the Allies, which would have been at that time Russia, um, the United Kingdom and France. Um, but they would have been coming out of two different plants at that time. Holt had plants in Stockton, California, which is kind of a suburb of San Francisco today. But the majority of the machines came out of what was known as the East Peoria plant, um, you know, which we have tractor production even today in that plant. So as we um, as Holt and Best did what they did during World War One, toward the end of that, um, of course, the great flu epidemic of 1918 uh, came to be. Um, were we still involved there? We stayed open during that as well? Uh, we did, actually. And, and that affected both not only Holt, but our other company, Best. And, and where it affected them was kind of, you know, just like today was the workforce working in the plant. And kind of we've done a little research. And what is kind of interesting, Rusty, is you know, like a lot today, people had to wear masks. They wore masks from, you know, people back then, you know, took trolleys and trains to work. They had to use them on the trains. They wore them in the factories. Um, but it affected best in the little bit of story of best. They were also seen as an essential company. But what they didn't do is provide machines that were used, that were shipped to Europe during the war. They made machines that were used in the domestic market you know, because for providing, you know, uh, for farming and for agriculture, um, and they were affected by these labor shortages also. And I want to step back for just a second, because it hits me that with what Holt and Best were doing in, in World War One, that really did make it possible or, or led to the merger of Caterpillar Inc., in essence, yes? It, it, it did, which, right, you never would think it did, would, but kind of what happened is World War I really ended abruptly. It ended much sooner than people thought in 1918. And Holt had totally converted over to making military type of tractors, kind of an armored type of tractor. Um, so when the war ended, right, they had a big surplus of these machines. And so did the U.S. government who kind of dumped these machines on the market. 
Um, they really didn't have kind of a strategy, you would say, when the war ended and how do we convert to this domestic market? Well, that gave CL Best a huge kind of lead because they were able to take over that, that domestic market. But kind of what Best was up against is, right, they were, well, let's put it this way, Holt was six times the size of Best, but Best was more profitable. So both kind of companies needed money to expand. Well, the answer to that was merger. Interesting. So fast forward um, some years um, as we get toward um, the late 30s, 1938, 1939, and the start of World War II. Um, put that in, into uh, perspective in terms of Caterpillar or machines being drafted into duty in essence. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it very much mirrors World War I in many ways. One is Caterpillar before the U.S. got involved into the war, was actually providing 30% of its products overseas to help what were the allies at that time, you know, which was both Russia um, and the United Kingdom. So when the U.S. got involved in the war, we were asked not only to make you know, what we would call our core products, right, earth-moving machines, uh, but we also made what you would say were specialty products, which were the, you know, the government asked us to make, you know, anything from howitzers to shells. But what was learned by 1943 is there was a huge demand for earth moving sheet machines and the, because of the success of our machines. So the government kind of said, quit making those specialty products and make as many tractors as you can. And that's what we did. And when you talk about something being essential and being an essential business, didn't someone or some of our military leaders actually say, if it weren't for um, the dozer, um, for what we know as the track type tractor, we may not have been as successful as we were. In, in yeah, the well, there were all kinds of accolades, accolades that happened after the war. Um, one, one, the most famous one came from Admiral Bull Halsey, and he said there was essentially four things that won the war, the submarine, the radar, the airplane, and the track type tractor. It was also called the boss of the beach. Um, general Patton, right, the real famous general known for kind of, you know, as a master of the tanks that he'd take a, a track type tractor or a dozer any time. Um, and really the name dozer, you know, which we call our machines today, really evolved from being the track type tractor to the dozer during the war. And that's really kind of when our machine yet again became world famous. And so Lee, to sort of put a fine point on this, coming out of these global events, the you know, World War One, World War Two, the pandemic. I assume as a company, we're always taking lessons from that as we move forward. And we very well may do the same thing here. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the big lesson learned at the end of World War One, which was even like before the war ended around 1944, is, you know, you got to remember our executives were they were made up a lot of them of former best and Holt executives. They knew what happened after World War One. So the seed was planted. We need to continue research and development. We need to develop new machines for when the war ends, we can go, you know, hit the ground running, you know, right, which is really kind of a strategy we have today. So um, these these forefathers of ours, they were always thinking they were always like trying to be one step ahead. Yeah, something something to think about uh, during this 95th year of, of Caterpillar Inc. It's just interesting, these dramatic circumstances and the events lead our company to innovate and to push the envelope and ultimately become a stronger company. Lee, always great to dig into Caterpillar history with you. And the past always provides some lessons for the present and into the future and, and guidance there. We appreciate you always helping us be the tour guide on that. Thanks, Rusty. Anytime. Lee, stay safe. Look forward to talking with you soon. And to all of you, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Be strong. Look forward to talking with you soon.